Welcome back. Very low volumes. Markets virtually unmoved as we speak. But a good time to get in another market voice. We have Sunil Subramanian, the MD and CEO of Sundara Mutual Fund, who joins us on the show. Hi, Sunil. Good to see you after a while and have you on the show. Well, uh, you know, the markets have done very, very well. The problem now is if you got in, what should you do? Should you add? Should you book some profits? And we are coming to the end of the fiscal year. So it could provide some opportunities as well. Before we get to stocks and sectors, I wanted to understand how do you approach this market? The place to be in has been the mid and the small cap space. Made you big money. But do you think now, going by the valuations, it's better you top up on some of those large cap names? Uh, no, I would say that uh, maybe a small reallocation uh, uh, into a large cap away from mid and small cap, very small. So I would still uh, uh, recommend the portfolio to be roughly evenly divided uh, between mid and small caps and uh, large caps which was earlier at about 70%. Now, we will tone it down. But the key point, I think, to, to take a call is that you mentioned about valuations, right? I think the valuations are uh, reflecting the flows. So if you look at the fact that what's driving up mid and small cap, what's driven it up over the last year, year and a half, and what's continuing to drive is the flows from the domestic part through the SIP book. Now, unlike a lump sum based flows, which can wax and wane, uh, SIPs are consistent flows. So when you look at they've touched 19,000 crores almost. And uh, our latest study shows that about 30% of that book is in mid and small cap and another 30% is in multi cap. So if you take that half of a multi cap portfolio would go into mid and small cap, you're looking at about 45% of the 19,000 crores, which are talking about eight to eight and a half thousand crores buying power for mid and small caps in the hands of mutual fund managers consistently being present. So I see no reason to panic uh, in terms of, uh, you know, you talk with the SEBI regulation came and all that. You know, the market absorbed that in no time. Mm. But as long as these consistent flows are there, I don't see it that somebody goes and stops their uh, five or 10 year SIP uh, based on a short term uh, reaction in the market. So I expect that a lot of buying support will keep the middle and small caps from falling very deeply, except of course at the tail end, where a lot of companies without fundamentals went up. But by and large, mutual fund portfolios are anchored around a future three to five year outlook of a company, its growth, its uh, entry barriers, its scalability. So these are fundamentally strong companies in which mutual funds are buying. So the other point I want to add is as long as you stick to your mid and small cap component through a mutual fund, a diversified mutual fund, I would say that there's really no need to do a major reallocation. Yes, a small reallocation into a large cap. And there again is the flows which are driving my thought process because I see FIF flows returning now in a big way with the GDP numbers coming. And with the you know elections, uh, there's no negative surprise. The continuity of the government mm -hmm. is more or less assured. So long-term money from FIIs coming in would tend to buy, obviously, a lot more large caps. So I expect bulk caps also to now step up and do, uh, you know, narrow the gap between middle and small cap returns and large cap returns. So a slight tilt in terms of a portfolio, stay multi-cap, give a reasonable weightage to large cap, mid-cap and small cap, I would say then you're good to go. Okay. Sunil, hi. Welcome to the show. If you had to just break it down sector-wise when you're looking at the large caps in terms of themes that could play out in the next couple of months, considering that we do have the elections that we're going into, what would your top three sectors be? So my top would still be banks. I still think that uh, for two, three reasons. So one is that the, it has come under pressure in the recent past uh, because of the biggest player in the sector uh, going through some challenges, uh, more from a beneficial owner, SEBI regulation perspective than from really fundamentals, because I think the fundamentals have been as bad there. But banking and financial services would continue to be my top pick because two reasons. One is that I expect the FIR flows to the extent that they come in passive form. You know, the last three years, passives have dominated the active flows into India. They would buy the index. And if you see in the index, 30, 35 percent being from banking and financial services means there's going to be consistent overseas buying support within large cap for banks and financial services. That would continue to be a top pick. The second pick there, I would say, is a domestic oriented uh, uh, industrials manufacturing space, right? Because that, I believe, is the one. And there are only a few companies in the large cap which have made it to that kind of a size. But because the story is of India growth, because the international story of America and Europe is still not clear. Every week data comes, you know, tilting one way or the other. We don't have a clear clarity uh, in terms of a 
strong growth path in the developed world. So the growth story of India, to the extent that's possible within the large cap and the larger mid cap, so I would say that uh, will run. The third would be consumer discretionary with auto, high-end retail, discretionary consumption because I see that that's the space where uh, the incremental growth and I see valuations also as more reasonable there than in a few other sectors. So for me, uh, banking and financial services uh, and uh, domestic industrials as well as uh, uh, consumer discretionary are my top three picks. Okay, and if you want to further get into these sectors, banking and financials, the place to be has been PSU banks. Private sector banks are looking yummy, but, you know, so to call it. If I look at Kotak Mahindra Bank, X of its subsidy is the core business on a price to book. Or if I look at HDFC Bank, X of its subsidies on a price to book. Look, they look absolutely brilliant. You know, someone told me a couple of years ago, you'll be getting these stocks. You're getting HDFC Bank at two times price to book. You will say you're kidding. Now, the time has come where you're getting it. The problem is in the near term because the casa has come down so much and the cost of deposits has uh, gone up to that manner. The NIMS could be under pressure and that could be a trade-off between growth as well as NIMS. So how would you approach it from year on? I would, I would still say that given the correction in the valuations, as you correctly pointed out, they represent very decent buys. Yes, I agree that the NIMS uh, will be challenged. But I think the good point is that the next leg of lending on the banks, you saw already saw retail lending has led the way in the past, but the next leg of lending is going to be corporate lending on the back of corporate capex growing. I still yes. think we are six, nine months away from a private capex cycle really taking off. But when that happens, I don't see that the NIM pressure is so much because in corporate lending, with ability to give big ticket loans on strong balance sheets, right? I think that the NIM pressure can be managed and the volume of those loans will compensate for a lesser name also. So absolute profit growth, EPS growth should be strong. So I think that, yes, for me, private sector banks look fairly attractive uh, from a, a medium term perspective. Hmm. Sunil, wanted your thoughts on uh, frontline IT and what kind of weightage are you giving to it in, its, in your portfolio? So I'm uh, relatively neutral there. I'm slightly, I would say, more favoring the larger cap versus the mid and small cap where there's, I think, a little bit of valuation pressure. So I would say that uh, it's a neutral. It's still not a strong buy because ultimately what's happening is that the rupee has been fairly stable. So a weakening rupee is what supports our sector. We don't see that happening in the near future. Second point is that there still isn't a strong growth coming out of the US and Europe. IT companies are essentially uh, going to grow from the business growth there. So I would still say that it's a safety sector, uh, retail neutral with a tilt towards larger cap companies there. Okay, all right. Uh... You know, Sunil, I also wanted to ask you about this entire hospital uh, fiasco that's been taking place. You know, whether or not the rates will come down or not. Some would say, if I've got the money, I'm willing to pay top dollar for the best treatment. While others would say, hey, maybe they're making too large profits. So might as well they skim down a little bit and give good quality at a decent price. Stocks like Apollo Hospitals, which have really been the flag bearer and command the highest valuations in the last week, they're down 10%, providing an entry opportunity, or you think still things can go anyway? So wait for clarity, and only then you look to get in. I would still wait for clarity there. So I think that the direction is not very really clear, because, see, the reason these hospitals raise rates and all that was the increasing insurance penetration. Now, when insurance company is picking up the tab, right, for your health insurance, right, then the resistance from a customer to that is less. And the penetration of insurance is making these hospitals also tab on. Mm. In fact, you go to any hospital and say, I want to pay cash and not rely on insurance. There are big difference in rates. So I think it's it's a part of that. And I think that we'll have wait and see, right? There, at some point, there will be resistance saying, why should I pay so much, right? So I would still wait and watch on that. I think it's early to make a move based on this uh, price correction. Okay, all right, Sunil, we're going to let you go on that note and enjoy your Saturday. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us and giving us your perspective on a whole host of sectors as well as the market. But moving on to the big